for President of the United States. Over the last few months, I've been thinking hard about my plans for 2008. Hi, I'm Sam Brownback, and I want to serve as your next president. I announced today that I'm forming a presidential exploratory committee. And welcome back. That is a short clip from a video put together by a website called politicstv.com. And it gives you an idea of how ubiquitous the Internet, especially video on the Internet, is in modern presidential campaigns. Now, Matt Lewis from townhall.com is still here. Thanks for sticking around. And Andrew Roche, who you may recall ran for public advocate right. on the Democratic side. But you also are the co-founder of something called techpresident.com. Right. Tell us what that is before well, we get started. It's actually a spin-off of Personal Democracy Forum, and it, what a tech president does is it keeps track of how the presidential candidates are or are not using technology. And we have both Republicans and Democrats blogging about various tools and applications that the candidates are using and how the Internet's affecting politics. Let's take a look at that, because, you know, in, in 2000 and even in 1998, um, you know, candidates had websites, pretty rudimentary. How has that changed? We're going to start with the Obama website, because you pointed out that there's some interesting things going on here. What, where, what is Obama doing with this website that is interesting and different? Well, in, in, in his particular case, if you, go, if you look on the right side there, it says uh, mybarackobama.com. Right. On the right side, right, right over here. Okay, yeah. You can see that you can, you can register yourself, and if, you've gone, if you go through the process, which is pretty simple, you can start uh, creating your own social network, you can start your own blog, you can start your own events. A lot of the campaigns um, allow uh, people to register themselves to get and establish their profiles, but mm -hmm. Barack has gone one step further and is really trying to build a social network on his site. And that's where the dynamics are different for this campaign as opposed to four years ago where it's much more about voter-generated content and just about the campaigns putting on a brochure online telling them about ourselves. So, so Matt, people are getting involved not just by looking at the website, but the idea is to get them uh, involved in a participatory way as opposed to just reading something. Is that right. Right? That's, that's absolutely right. And, and actually, though, I think one thing to note is the, for right now the average person, we have to remember, isn't really paying attention to politics. You know, they're worried about what's on the office, you know, this, mm -hmm. this coming week. <laughs> political junkies nice like... Nice plug for an NBC show, thanks. <laughs> political junkies like us are. And yeah. one of the things that this does is it allows the activists, you know, the folks who really care, who are going to host a debate watching party, mm -hmm. or who are going to email a hundred of their friends. And so uh, right now that's the game I think we're in, is, is allowing, activating and empowering the, the activists to really make a difference. Let's talk about a Republican site, MittRomney.com. You said of the Republicans, he's doing something that's real interesting. Tell me a little bit about well, that. Well, first of all, Mitt Romney was the first Republican to have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So he's a little bit uh, progressive, proactive there. Right. He also has what I think is really cool is he has a blog. He has five sons and they have a blog. And that's called, here it is, Five Brothers. Right. And what are they doing with this? They actually travel all over the country as surrogates speaking for him. And um, they basically just document, you know, live blog what, what they do, where they are. And it's, it's pretty neat. And, you know, I think uh, a candidate's website says something about them. It's a microcosm of what, what they're about. And in this case, Mitt Romney is, is very family-oriented, and I think this blog is a good example of that. For the most part, Andrew, are the candidates using, uh, fund, uh, using websites to fundraise, though? Is that the, the biggest Well, I mean, clearly, clearly online fundraising is a big important part of any campaign. In fact, the notion of online fundraising you know, doesn't really mean it just happens online, because people who go to events often make their donations online. Mm -hmm. So it's really the easiest way for people to deliver the money to the campaign. And unfortunately, many of the campaigns still from a from a, you know, their, their top advisors and strategists view yeah. the internet as a vehicle for raising money. Right. But some of the campaigns are starting to realize that the, 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 the website can actually act as a tool to help get their message out and then they're using the energy of the supporters to then further get the message out. Another thing that's happening is, is YouTube or video on the web. Exactly. And I, I want to start with, with one that kind of started this ball rolling, although it wasn't something that YouTube didn't even exist then. And this is Trent Lott speaking at Strom Thurmond's birthday party uh, in 2002, I believe. Take a look at this. My state. When Strom Thurmond ran for president, we voted for him. <laughs> We're proud of it. And if the rest of the country had followed our lead, we wouldn't have had all these problems over all these years either. That comment ran, and that was taped by a network crew, and nothing happened for, what, two weeks? And then a blogger picked up on it. That's correct. And, 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 and Trent Law ended up losing his position as majority leader. Well, that was actually, that's a, that's a seminal point in the history of politics and, and, and technology, where the mainstream media actually captured the moment and didn't write about it. Didn't do anything with it. But a blogger 
said, wait a second, there's something here, and started pointing it out, pointing it out to other bloggers. Other bloggers started linking to that blogger, and before you knew it, where, where there was smoke, there became a fire. Now, now in Virginia, in the Virginia Senate race, and you, do you live in Virginia? You're down in do. Washington, but you I live do. in Virginia, yeah. so you know this one. This was the, the clip from uh, George Allen, who was running for Senate, and he, a, a campaign worker from Jim Webb's campaign, the Democrat running against him, is following around videotaping him. Everybody yeah. does that, and then this happened. Uh, take a look at this. Fire people for something. This fellow here over here with the, the yellow shirt, Makaka, or whatever his name is, he's with my opponent. He's following us around everywhere. And it's just great. We're going to places all over Virginia. And he's having it on film, and it's great to have you here. And you show it to your opponent because he's never been there and probably will never come. So it's good for you. That, that didn't take two weeks to get going. Yeah, and I, well, actually... And a lot of people think, we were just talking about the presidential debates, I mean, this had implications much greater than just the United States Senate, but also uh, he would have been probably the front runner. George Allen may have been for, for the president. Yeah. For the president. But what does this say about YouTube and the immediacy of video? I mean, some guy following around with the camera, every, everybody's doing that now. You've got to watch every word you say. I think there's going to be uh, positive and negative effects. I mean, one of the negative things that could happen is every candidate knows that they're on television or that, that they could be on television at every moment. And so they're going to be a little bit less sincere. They're going to be, you're going to get a lot more scripted talking points. And that would be a bad thing. Right. The good thing is, I mean, as someone who has worked on challenger campaigns, running against entrenched incumbents, a lot of these guys, they, you know, they're not good people. And mm -hmm. frankly, they need to be exposed. So the world has changed. And this isn't just happening in U.S. Senate campaigns. This is in state rep races in every state in America. You could run for school board now and be caught on YouTube. And because the technology is so inexpensive, and anybody can use it. You know, you don't have to know and, and, and XML. The, and the campaigns are using it too. There, there was this uh, pseudo Apple ad that uh, the Obama campaign, the Barack Obama campaign, didn't actually put together, but a staffer did. There was that ad. Well, it Hillary wasn't Clinton. a staffer. It was it was somebody working a for contractor. a company that was contracted right. by Obama. So he did it independently. So, so there's that. But then, the, directly, the candidates can use YouTube and are using YouTube and getting video well, out so too. So here's, here's the, the, the the key. So yeah. voter generated content is changing the dynamics. Whether it's caught by somebody at the uh, George Allen event or somewhere else during the campaigns, voter generated content is going to change the dynamics. The key for the campaigns, and as Matt just alluded, is the campaigns have to start learning how to live in this new environment. Some of them are going to be scripted, but some of them are also going to start using it to show a more authentic version of themselves. And if you're, this clip you're about to show was actually a reaction to the Hillary Clinton first video where she announced her candidacy, candidacy online by saying she was going to have a conversation with the American public. Right. And as a result, a Barack Obama supporter created this video. Right. All right, we're going to uh, uh, take a break here. I appreciate you guys both coming in. Hillary Clinton, of course, using the Internet, Barack Obama, Rudy Giuliani, all of them doing that. It's uh, very interesting. I think we'll have you back in because this is continuing to develop as the campaign goes on. So thanks for being in, guys. When we return, Mike Bloomberg's surprising advice to would-be politicians, stick around. You just might learn something.